We live in earthquake country, but how would you respond when the really big one hits? Do you know what to do? You're listening to a special edition of Home Wizards, all about earthquake safety. Right now, here's Cindy Dole. Good afternoon, and uh, with me is uh, the state's geologist. Did you know that the state has its own geologist? His name's Dr. John Parrish, and his job is to consult, of course, the governor with all that he knows about uh, what's happening with seismic activity. So, Dr. Parrish, thanks for uh, sharing part of your Saturday with me. Um, so you're saying, really, we still can't predict earthquakes? No, that, that's right. We, we can forecast them. We have a lot of history on earthquakes, so we can sort of uh, uh, try to try to... Uh, figure out uh, some repeatability along some faults, but we cannot with any accuracy uh, predict when the next earthquake will occur. Do you think we'll ever will be able to predict? Well, there's some very smart people working on that, and uh, it may be possible sometime in the future. I don't know if it'll be in our lifetimes, but uh, there's a lot of very interesting work going on by some uh, very smart folks uh, Mm -hmm. who will probably figure out how to predict an earthquake sometime in the future. And if we did have that information, it's like, would it really change how we responded, you know? Well, that's a a major question, that uh, if you knew there was going to be a large earthquake, say, in the middle of Los Angeles, what would you do? Um, You don't want to create panic, because that can create more uh, harm. So what, uh, what we try to do is make sure that the buildings and the structures that people are in uh, will be safe for them during a major earthquake uh, so that they can survive those things. Well, uh, also joining us now, uh, Dr. Parrish is someone that you know very well. She is also, like you, the voice of calm and the face of reason before, during, and after any earthquake. And uh, she's seismologist with uh, the U.S. Geological Survey and, of course, at Caltech, Dr. Lucy Jones. Hi, Lucy Jones. Good afternoon. So, uh, do you think that uh, we are any closer to predicting exactly the minutia of when a quake is going to happen? Are you with Dr. Parrish that's not going to happen in our lifetime? Not the time. I mean, uh, we predict a lot of things about earthquakes. We can predict where they're likely to happen. We understand the role of faults, and we produce the U.S. Geological Survey with the California Geological Survey jointly produces hazard maps that show you where they're going to happen. Uh, we can tell you what's going to happen when they do happen. We do a very good job of saying what's the shaking and the damage. And even on when, we can tell you the rate of earthquakes. There will be 20 or 30 today in California. Mm-hmm. The one thing we can't do is say what's the time of one particular event. And the key to the problem is you want to know not just that there's going to be an earthquake, but that it's going to be a big earthquake. And our problem is that big and small earthquakes seem to start the same way. And if what happens before a big one is the same as what happens before a small one, we'll never be able to predict them. And there's some sirens running by you there. Oh, yeah. you <laughs> they, they seem to follow Dr. Lucy Jones around. Um, so when this big one does happen, um, what will it look like and feel like? Dr. Parrish, Dr. Jones, go ahead and chime in. Will it, will it be different? It, what's One of the things that's really different about a really big one, there's two things. It, it's a big one because it's on a bigger fault. And that means that a lot more people are right on top of the earthquake. And when you're right on top of the earthquake, you get a lot more shaking than even a small distance away. So we're going to have a lot more people uh, in the heavily damaged areas. And anyone who was in Chatsworth and Northridge can tell you that's really different than being a little distance away. The other thing is that because it has to go up a very long fault, it lasts for a longer time. And we're, our estimate is that the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco lasted for about 100 seconds. By contrast, Northridge lasted for seven seconds. Mm. And something to add uh, on, on top of that, too, is the impact it has on California. Um, about 70% of California's population and businesses and infrastructure is within about 30 miles of uh, a fault that's capable of uh, doing considerable damage. So California's population and economy is very much um, at risk with faulting in California with earthquakes. Mm-hmm. And, and just this week, there was research saying that the, the, the big one could be even bigger than everyone thought, this, uh, this wall-to-wall tembler, right? Well, we've actually, I mean, it, the news there wasn't very newsy. I mean, it was like the, the San Andreas can have a magnitude 8. 
I want, you know, in fact, I think we knew that. What it was is that it shows us that there's one part of the fault. The new research is showing one part of the fault has um, earthquakes more often than was previously thought. So it somewhat increases the likelihood that, you know, it's like we've always known we're going to have a big earthquake sometime, you know, pretty soon. Um, and, you know, the chances that it's going to be a 7.9 versus the chances that it's going to be an 8.1. We sort of shifted a little towards the 8.1. That's not a big difference for most people. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are going out to the mall or to the theater or whatever, I just have visions of you in public places thinking in your in your brain, okay, if it were to happen right now, this is what I would do. Yeah, I definitely do that. And I used to teach my kids to do it. We'd go, we, we used to play the earthquake game, and we'd be able to say earthquake and have to pretend that there was an earthquake happening, and what would we do? At home, we'd actually go and get under the table. But in a public place, I'd say, so what would we do now? Where, where would you go? And try to teach them that you shouldn't run during an earthquake. Um, you try and get under a table to protect yourself from falling objects. If there's no table, go to an interior wall. But I often do when I go inside a building go, hmm, I wonder what I'd do this time. It's always good advice to uh, for people to be aware of their surroundings whenever they're out uh, in a building or traveling down a street or across a bridge, uh, just to think, uh, what would you do should an earthquake occur? And um, it, it can be helpful to, to just subconsciously almost uh, look around for places to be if, uh, if an earthquake occurred. And Dr. Parrish, I noticed on your website it says that you're closed three days a month due to the furloughs. I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> you're not closed when the earthquake happens. Well, we're open 24-7 okay. when it comes to uh, monitoring the response. Good, of course. Well, great to have you, uh, Dr. John Parrish. And stick around, Dr. Lucy Jones. We're going to bring in more guests, and we're going to talk about how is the state uh, management preparedness, emergency management preparedness uh, system working? How are they going to communicate to us, and what do we do to keep our home and our family and our loved ones prepared for what's going to happen? You're listening to Home Wizards, a very special earthquake safety edition. I'm Cindy Dole, and we're back in just a few.